I know I've told you before, I'm a big, big, big Prince fan. And today I'm going to tell you my Prince story with a little twist at the end. And it's all starting right now. Hey everybody, Chris King here with Love Live Music. Thanks so much for checking out my channel today. If you've been here before, you know that I haven't been around in a while. I appreciate your patience as I worked through the busyness of my business, my other job, my real job, not my YouTube job. Thanks for stopping by again. If this is your first time, please hit me with a like, a subscribe, a comment. I would love to hear from you because I love to talk about live music and maybe that's how you've shown up on my channel. What I'm talking about today is my all-time favorite artist, Prince talked about him a lot before, but today is a special day because it happens to be Prince's birthday. June 7th, Prince would be 63, I believe. He was born in 1958. Isn't it interesting that he and Madonna and Michael Jackson all born in 1958? And if you were a child growing up in the 80s, those three were about as big as it could get in music. Prince, Madonna, Michael Jackson, all born in 58. So Prince would be 63 today. As you might know, Prince didn't celebrate birthdays. So this isn't so much a celebration as a point for me to tell my Prince story. And I've got a few, but this is the big Prince story of my life. And something happened recently that is a little bit of a twist to the end of the story. As we've talked about before, what I do for a living is I book and run live music venues. And this is really the only job that I've ever had in my adult life. Yes, I've also got a restaurant that does very well here in my home base of Little Rock, Arkansas, that keeps me very busy. But the concert venue, the concert booking, the show booking, small club stuff, larger club stuff, it's what I've kind of always done since I was old enough to really have a job. And if you do that for a living, then you might be aware that what Prince was notorious for was his after shows. After a concert, he would normally go, not normally, but many times, he would go and perform at a club venue in the town where he had just played a concert. So he might play in front of 15, 20,000 people, then go to a club and play in front of three, four, five, six hundred people. It was just something that he was known for. There's a lot of bootlegs that float around where you can hear some of these late night shows. One of my favorites, I think is from uh, Paris. It's called Second Show That Night. Small Club Second Show. I have to look it up. Anyway, my point is these things happen with Prince frequently when he plays the larger shows. And for someone in my line of work, naturally it would be a life's dream to be able to work on one of these prints after shows when he played in my town. Now, being where I am in Arkansas, Prince didn't play here a whole lot. I think he played the market, uh, what? He played in Pine Bluff, which is 60 miles from here. He played on the 1999 tour, and then he came through, um, man, I guess two other times. He came through like in 98, January of 98, and then again in 01. 2001 is what I'm here to talk about. I've got a room in Little Rock at the time called Sticky Fingers Rock and Roll Chicken Shack. These days it's called Sticky's Rock and Roll Chicken Shack. You can find it online. I'll leave a link down in the description. I knew that Prince was coming to town, of course, and I get to work. It's a Saturday. I get to work that morning and I've got a message from my friends that run the arena in town where Prince would be performing. They say, hey, would you be interested in an after show event with Prince? Well, of course, I'm about to jump out of my skin as I'm responding to the email or the phone call. I can't remember at the time what it was. I remember where I was sitting in the room when I got the information and I uh, said, yes, yes, a thousand times yes. That's all I really want to ever do is work on a Prince event. And they said, all right, well, here's the tour manager's number. He wants you to give him a call at this time. So I go through my day. It's about three o'clock. Call up the tour manager. He says, yeah, look, here's what we want to do. We want to do something in your venue. We've heard it's a cool place. 
and we're going to have to see it. So can you come over to the arena, pick me up, bring myself over to your venue? I said, no problem. I go, I pick him up, I bring him over. He takes a little walkthrough of what we've got going on at Sticky Fingers and uh, really likes the place. You know, he's like, yeah, man, the vibe's cool. Prince is going to love it here. You know, uh, and, and as an aside, the place called Sticky Fingers Rock and Roll Chicken Shack. He says, uh, yeah, one thing, is it possible that you could cover up the word or pictures of chickens anywhere that you've got in the building? Just cover them up because Prince, vegetarian, you know, uh, he's not going to be real cool with the chicken shack aspect. I said, uh, I said, yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking it might be impossible, but yeah, I'll do it. Whatever. I'm going to get Prince here that night. I think that, man, I feel like Bernie Worrell was playing. That almost seems right. Bernie Worrell, who played with uh, Parliament, who played with the Talking Heads. He might have been the night before the night after. In any event, it doesn't necessarily matter. What matters is I went and saw Prince at the arena. It was not my favorite Prince show from an energy standpoint. Um, who do you have with him? The funky bald heads. You know, I, I would say of all the times that I've seen Prince, this was my least favorite Prince show. The arena wasn't very full, like maybe a third full. Can you imagine like 7,000 people showing up to see Prince, 5,000 people showing up to see Prince. It's crazy, but it was 2001. It was kind of in a weird dip in his career. So I get back to my venue and I know the deal because it's all spelled out for me. We have to close at 1 a.m. normally. The concert is over at the arena at like 11 and it's going to be sometime after 12 that Prince wants to come over. Due to the liquor laws in my state, I can have people in the building, but I can't serve any alcohol or have any alcohol out whatsoever. So it's got to be a dry event. I can sell non-alcoholic drinks. No problem. The issue is when I get back to the venue, we're packed, man. I mean, 200 people at least in the room having a great time. It's a Saturday night. It's a big night to be out in town and... I have to make the call to close an hour early because ultimately I've got to get everybody out of the room lined up down the street to come back in once we get Prince to the venue, right? So we close early. At this point, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of talk going around that this is where the after show is going to be. And there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of people around and everybody starts lining up down the street. And I mean, they're lined up two blocks down the road, deep line of people that are just waiting for us to reopen the doors. So I start calling the tour manager. Hey, how far out? He's like, ah, man, give me a few minutes. I'll call you back. So wait, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes later, I hit him back. Hey, how we looking, man? What time do you think you guys are going to arrive? He says, yeah, give me a few more minutes. I'll hit you back. Well, wait and I wait and I wait. I got a long line of people that have been waiting outside now for like 30, 45 minutes to come back in. And uh, things don't feel so good. And then I get the call and he says, man, Prince changed his mind. He just wants to go get something to eat tonight instead. I was crushed. I was crushed. You have no idea. It's all I've ever in my line of work, it was going to, it was the pinnacle. I mean, what? It's not like the Rolling Stones are going to call me up and say, Hey, we want to do an after show at your little bar in Little Rock, Arkansas, right? Uh, it was, it was the one cherry on top of what I do for a living that I'd always wanted. And now he's saying it's not going to happen. And I've run all these people out of my, out of my par. Yeah, it was hard to handle. I was aggravated, but I knew where Prince was staying and it was just three or four blocks away. So what do I do? I go over there angrily, angrily. I get to the front of the Capitol Hotel in Little Rock, Arkansas, a beautiful hotel right in the middle of downtown. It's a nice spot. It's been there for, I think, 100 years, or over 100 years. 
It's a great hotel. I got all the doors locked because at this point it's one o'clock, one thirty in the morning, right? And uh, and the dining room is ground level, just right. It's even before you hit the check-in. It's like the restaurant area, and uh, and I know they're just beyond the glass of where I'm standing because I'm still calling the tour manager. I'm still calling him. I'm standing on the sidewalk, mad, probably cussing, angry. And feel like I was let down by my hero. Like I had this promise that was never really a promise. But it's one of those things, you know. Not everything always works out. And that's one that just didn't work out. So fast forward to a few weeks ago. I was going through my house. I was looking for something. And... uh going through this this drawer and I stumbled across a ticket stub for a show. And I keep all my ticket stubs in another place altogether. So I was surprised to find this. And uh, I was more surprised to see that it was the Prince show from that tour. Hit and Run Tour 2001 All Tell Arena Saturday evening. 6750 for a ticket. Very reasonable. What shocked me and here's the twist is that I was I was looking around, I found this like, you know, the end of April. And this concert happened April 21st, 2001. Exactly 20 years ago to the month when I found the stub. What's even more shocking, and Prince fans already know what I'm going to say, and this is the twist. April 21 is the day that Prince died in 2016. So this event happened exactly 15 years to the day before Prince's death. And then I would stumble across the stub exactly five years later. Some things happen in the universe that are very strange or for a reason. Who knows? That is my Prince story. And I hope that you enjoy listening to me talk about my favorite music stuff, concerts, bands, all of that. If you do, there's video coming up right now on the screen. I know I haven't been around in a while, but I'm starting making more videos for you guys. And I really hope that you enjoy it. Subscribe to me. My name is Chris King, and I love live music.